What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making some gobies. This is a little three and a half inch goby mold. It's not a bait that you see made a whole lot. It's a really good bait. I like throwing it on a drop shot and a Ned rig. We've got one measuring cup each of some bait plastics 242 medium blend. It's a really good just overall plastic. We're going to throw these cups in the microwave, get them vacuumed to get all the bubbles out, and we'll meet you right back. We are back. We got our plastic all cooked up, bubble free, nice and clear. So the color we're going to make today, uh, it's kind of a pretty natural color. We're going to do a laminate. We're going to do a green pumpkin base on the top. This is just green pumpkin 109. It's probably one of the best just overall green pumpkin colors. And then on the bottom, on a lot of bait fish, we do a white color. But on these gobies, I don't want anything super bright. So on the bottom, we're actually going to use this sand color as our base, and then we'll add to that. And I'll show you what we're going to do. So we got one measuring cup of plastic. On most colorants, about 40 drops of plastic for one cup is average. Um, we're not really going to measure out drops. We're just going to pour some in, stir it up, and see what it looks like. These are actually cheese spreaders. You can find them on Amazon. I used a butter knife for the long, longest time but this bottom side is smooth on these whereas a butter knife is serrated and it'll cause bubbles. These actually work a lot better. And I apologize if there's a lot of background noise. We've been dealing with rain non-stop for like the last month but I figured I'd still try to get something out for you guys. You can see there it's just a nice natural green pumpkin color. It is pretty cold out, so this plastic will cool off pretty quick, but we'll make it work. I'm going to add a little bit more, make it a little bit more saturated. Let's see where that gets us. Yeah, that's about the color we're looking for there. And then for this one, we're going to add three different types of flake. First one we add is going to be the .062. This is what a lot of people refer to as a large size. We're going to add a little bit of that. We're going to add some .04, which is the medium. And then we're actually going to add some .015, the small, in a copper color. In the big, the large size, we're just going to use 1 16th of a teaspoon. I don't like adding a lot of the large because I want it to be very spread out throughout the bait. And then I add the two different sizes of black. I'm also going to do 1 16th in the medium size black. Using multiple sizes of the same color just adds a lot of good texture. And then on the small, I'm going to use the 16th, but I'm only going to use about 3 quarters of it. I'm not going to do a full scoop. Let's mix all this in and see what it looks like. When you're adding your flake, once you mix it all in, you can just kind of pick it up with the spoon and you can see how much flake is in it and you can determine if you want to add a little more or a little less. I'm actually going to add a little bit more of the black. And now like I said on this other side, we're going to use the sand color. Pour a little bit in. This is a really thick colorant, so you don't have to add as much as you would on others. And then what I like to do, I'm going to have to heat this back up a little, it's cool enough. But what I like to do is actually add a little bit of this copper highlight powder. It just adds that little bit extra to that bottom color to really make it look natural. And when you're laminating two different colors and you have a powder on one side and then just liquid colors on the other, a lot of times it'll blend together on the edges which makes it look a little bit more natural instead of just two solid clean lines. Yeah, this plastic's cooling off really quick. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of that copper highlight powder to it. And then we're going to throw them back in the microwave, get them back up to temp, and then we'll see what it looks like. Calling an audible. 
What we're going to do instead of laminating is we're going to use this Angling AI C block. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. The C just stands for camo. So you have your two colors. You can see how one side only comes on this half of the block and the other color comes on the other half of the block. And you have this little divider plate. So if you can see those channels that come down in there, what it does is it takes the two colors and splits them. So the colors actually turn into four separate ports and it just kind of gives you a, a random camo swirl looking pattern. Um, I actually haven't done the camo pattern on this goby mold yet so I'm kind of curious as to what it's going to look like. So we're about to find out. Alright, so when you use a C block, you're going to do the same thing. Get both of your colors up to temp. You're going to use the same dual injector that you would use for a laminate. But instead of using your regular blending block, you're going to use that C block. And you're just going to inject with nice, even pressure, just like you normally would. We'll let that cool off and then we'll see what it looks like. Alright, while we wait on that to finish cooling off, I'll show you the difference in a regular blending block for laminating and then that C block. So when you're doing just a standard laminate, you have your two colors come in, meet in the middle, and it makes a nice clean laminate down the middle. The C block, as I was saying earlier, it takes the two, turns it into four, I don't know how exactly they figured this out, but you can see how it's all just kind of swirled in there together. So you have your two colors that come in from either side, and then it splits it into four separate ones, and then you can see in the end of that, it just kind of swirls it and gives us a nice random like camo pattern. Yeah, it's a really cool design. Um, you can... If you don't have a C block, you can do the same thing with a blend, or a similar thing with the blending block. And instead of when you're injecting, going down with a nice even pressure with your injectors, you take the little handle off the top so you can move your injectors and you just pulse them down. Like some people call it milking the cow. You just pulse your injectors down and it'll give you a nice swirl pattern. Also, I'll show you one last thing. So a lot of people are curious about these injectors and how to clean it once it's cooled off. I just peel the plastic off, pull that tip out of the injector, take your caps off, and then just push your plugs out, and then you're good to go. Right. Mold's cooled off, let's check it out. You can see instead of it being just the green pumpkin on top and then that sandy color on the bottom, it just kind of swirls it through the bait. It's a pretty neat, or a pretty neat concept. I don't know if I would swirl these two colors again, but it's not bad. What we're going to do, we'll uh, take the leftover plastic, we'll heat it back up, we'll run a few more of these, and then we'll check them all out at the end. All right, so here's the rest of them. After heating up that plastic and making a few more, I actually like this color a lot. That first run had a lot of that sand color on the top, but as you can see, some of these other ones where really you got a lot more of the green pumpkin on the top. And kind of swirled throughout it. I actually like it quite a bit. Uh, let us know what you guys would like to see next. One thing about we are a fairly new channel. Um, don't have a lot of people watching right now. So if you comment down below what you would like to see next. The chances of us making your suggestion are actually really high. Um, yeah let us know. We can make some more soft plastics. If you want to see some more C block stuff where it swirls like this. We can do that. We can do regular laminates. We can do jigs. Um, we can do some more tie-in videos, so I'll show you guys over here too. Let me move you over. This is kind of a rough rundown of like what we have. We have starting over here. We have a regular Ned head, our weedless Ned, our Magnum weedless Ned heads, shaky head, weighted wacky, a ball head with a screw lock, the freestyle jig, which is one of my favorite jig heads for swim baits. Got a bullet jig, underspins, hair jigs, 
two different types of swim jigs. Got our ball head finesse jig, arky mm -hmm. jig, brush jig. We have three different football head jigs. This one is the real small finesse jig. If you would like to see us do a match to the little Kitek uh, finesse tungsten jigs, we can do it with that mold. We have a stand-up football head mold here and then just a regular football head. If you want to see us make any of these or just make some more soft plastics, let us know. But yeah, here's our spread of gobies. It's a really good mold. Um, if you want, I'll actually show you real quick how I like to rig these up. Uh, like I said, I usually use it on either a drop shot or a Ned rig. Super cool little bait, real finesse. It's something that fish don't see a lot. I mean, you don't go to the store and see these little gobies. And you can see with the way this tail section is ribbed, it gives it a ton of action with just very little movement. You can just sit there on a drop shot and just barely hold it and that little tail is just wiggling like crazy back there. Real cool bait. I'll show you real quick how we rig them up and then we'll sign out. Alright, so here's the two ways I rig these. One is just on a drop shot. I typically run like a 12 to 18 inch leader most of the time. But you can see I just nose hook it right there. And while you're just sitting there twisting it, that little tail is just going crazy back there. I'll either throw it on a drop shot like this, or I'll just throw it on a standard Ned Rig. Works really well. I prefer the Ned Rig, but if you're in areas where it's real grassy, a lot of times I'll switch to the drop shot and use the cover shot hooks. You can use the weedless Ned, but as you can see, the body right here is actually kind of tall. So I prefer to just stick with the regular standard Ned Rig hook instead of the weedless, but you can use it. It works just well. But that's my favorite way to use it right there. And... Yeah, just let us know what you guys think. Would you throw this? Uh, also, head over to our Instagram page. That's where we do a lot of our stuff. We do actually sell these lures, so if, they're, if you are interested in picking something up, just head over there and check it out. I'll have it linked down below. But yeah, pretty cool little gobies right here. Let us know what you think and what you'd like to see next, and we'll see you next time.